for a Staff Spotlight interview. Take it away. Shockwave and Humphrey, how are you both of you gentlemen doing today? Doing good, how are you? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm tired, but ready to keep going. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting here. We're going constantly, trying to make sure we're able to keep the event going at every moment possible. So I want to first, for our, uh, for our first question here, just talk to you both a little bit about what you do primarily behind the scenes. So, Shaka, let's go ahead and start with you. Sure. So, I'm the head producer. Uh, my job is to make sure all the producers or the people that are basically organizing the whole stage, organizing all the capture, the runners, the commentators, making sure they have everything they need to succeed, including myself as a producer. So, making sure that, like, we can get things going as quick as possible. Absolutely. And Humphrey, for you? Uh, so, I'm the uh, volunteer manager. So, my responsibilities are more recruiting and getting sure we have enough volunteers for your department, tech, donations, safety, cleaning, everything everywhere all at once, essentially. So uh, I work with the uh, volunteer coordinators, make sure they have enough heads, everyone's shifted where they need to be, everything's do, covered. Do you have any sort of a head count of how many volunteers that you need to make this event work at all? <laughs> uh, if, we, if we look into all the different departments, it's, I think, probably 250, 300 oh. at this event right now. Um, we keep adding a few more departments each time as we find that there's a need to fill gaps and things, so that keeps going up and up and up. Uh, a little different for the online-only events, but for the on-site, we're pushing 300. It's incredible to think about 13 years ago, this was done in Mike Uyama's mother's basement. Yeah. And now it's like, <laughs> we need literally hundreds of people to make this production work. Again, shouts to everybody who volunteers their time and make sure that this can happen. So I want to talk to both of you about, obviously, we've raised millions of dollars for charity organizations over the years. Lots of great moments that we can be proud of. Do either one of you have just a story, a moment Maybe behind the scenes, the, either a good story or just one that made you really proud to be a part of the staff. You want to take this one first? Uh, yeah, sure. So for me, as much as I love being on site, as much as this environment is the most incredible thing, I think for me the proudest thing was the first time we pulled off one of the remote events, the full yeah. remote events, because we had no clue what we were going to do. It was uh -huh. kind of seat of the pants. It was honestly my first event as staff as well. Oh, my gosh. So I, got, I got jumped in in the best possible way. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to rebuild all the processes, things like, you know, every, every runner and, and commentator and host and interviewer has to be tech checked. And we're talking several hundred people for that. So the first time we did it, it was me, Uyama, and Sent. And we did the tech checks for literally everything. We got all that done. We figured everything out. Everyone came together from all the different departments. People at the studio <laughs> went in and crushed yeah. it in person. <laughs> and we made it happen. And the, nobody expected the event to do nearly as well as it did in that format. And we, we crushed it. And that was, I was so proud. Absolutely killed it. It was wonderful to see how successful that event was. Mm. Shockwave for you, you got any stories? Yeah, so actually, last live event that we did, um, we had, during the finale, there's always a cluster of people on the stage trying to just make sure that we get the finale shot with everyone on stage. You got the last run. Everyone's just kind of grouping up because it's the end of the event. We're all just hanging out, having fun. But one of the things as producers is you, gotta, you just got to know when to make the calls on something. Yeah. Um, and for last year, we were hitting the 2.9, and we kind of like petered off a little bit, 2.9, 2.92, and then it like slowed down. And we have to sort of figure out this cutoff point of, do we try to wait for 3 million? Do we try to do this? Do we try to do that? And we're just sitting there deciding for like 15 minutes. And then the donations just skyrocket. Yeah. Like, we're watching that, and we're like, what, what is happening? And Twitch chat is just pulling through, pulling numbers <laughs> on donations, and we're all just losing our mind. Because, like, okay, you all hit a bonus run, and we didn't expect this to happen, so we're getting ready to call it. Like, okay, we got, we got Doctors Without Borders on stage to close out the marathon. And then I had to go pull them off and be like, we just hit three million. We got to go to another run. <laughs> it was just impressive the amount of energy in the room. The, the crowd exploded with three mil. The staff just, like, everyone's trying to contain the energy so we can continue to put on the show. Oh, it, was I that. It, was, it was like a movie. Sumi was up there ready to it read. Was, and yeah. they're like, Sumi, get off the stage. Wait. <laughs> it's never. It's like, 
you can't describe that feeling, just being there in the moment where you have to contain your excitement and be like, okay, we got to do this thing. I got to focus. And then once the thing's on, be like, now I can celebrate. Now I'm happy. <laughs> and none of us at home necessarily knew what was happening in that moment. And all of a sudden we see like the behind the scenes, someone got their like found footage on the movie, <laughs> checking back there, like shuffling everyone off stage. We got one more left in us. Everybody getting back up there. It was so cool to watch. So I got one more question for both of you before I let you get off stage and get back to running this amazing event. Obviously, this is one part amazing charity event, but also we a lot of us here, we're big nerds. We have a big passion for speedrunning. So Shockwave, I'll start with you. Where does your passion for speedrunning come and why you're happy to be a part of this event? So for me, it's kind of like a quest that there's always something slightly better I can do with that run. I like learning new tricks, new slight optimizations. Um, with the run that I have in the event Gunfire Reborn, it's completely random. Yeah. Um, I actually did a hotfix show to sort of like hype the event up. And then I talked to the mod team of that game and they taught me a bunch of other things that makes the run even more consistent and or faster. So like learning all these different strategies, learning all these different things that I can do to optimize the game is kind of what drives me to keep going for that better time. I know that's out there and it's like, I just got to keep going. Do it again, do it again, do it again. That's awesome. Yeah, make sure, by the way, you check out that gunfire run by Shockwave later on in this event. What day is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be Thursday night. Thursday night, looking forward to it, my friend. And Humphrey, for you, passion for speedrunning. So for me, it's not even about necessarily the act of speedrunning. I've, sure. I've dabbled in some games, but I don't actively speedrun anything right now. It, for me, it's about the community, and that's the thing that kind of drew me to it is, you know, I watched it for years before I ever joined because I thought it was so neat that this, I don't want to say niche, but this sort of not overly appreciated throughout all of the, the masses, uh, hobby or passion, and people took it and, and created this out of it. <laughs> And on top of that, it's one of the most welcoming, cool communities I've ever seen. It's just, I love an environment where you can go, you, you don't have to fit into any box, you don't have to be a part of any specific community, but you just feel welcomed and you are never out of place. You can find somebody here who appreciates the same things as you, and you're just, you're just welcomed. And to me, that's the beautiful thing. It's not even about the speedrunning for me. Unless, unless it's phasmophobia and then I speed them. Right. Them all <laughs> Absolutely love this community. I love the feel that sometimes we are just a beautiful little group of misfits that yeah. come together over just love of this super weird way to play games, but we're into it. Dude, Shockwave, Humphrey, thank you both so much for joining. Again, make sure you check out that gunfire run later on in the marathon on Thursday. Thank you all so much for watching the interview, and we'll see you. Uh, let's kick it back up to the front for CrossCode and more amazing runs here at SGDQ 2023. Thank you very much, everybody. Let's give another round of applause to Spike, Vegeta, Shockwave, and Humphrey. All right, we've got a $5 donation from Naomi that says, Year of Cross Code at SGDQ. What an amazing event and a once-of-a-lifetime experience to meet so many of you all. Let's go, Yoshi. You got this. I want to give everybody an update on some of our incentives. And we got some new incentives that just dropped as well. Let's talk about the Returnal Tower incentive first. Everybody, we are at $9,959. We are so close to reaching the $10,000 goal that we need to unlock phase one. So please, make sure we can try to get that remaining $41 so we can reach that goal. We've also got the Elder Scrolls Anthology Bonus Elder Scrolls Adventures, the Red Guard run that currently sits at $457 of the 20,000 needed to be able to unlock. And everyone knows we all love more GDQ, so please make sure that when you go to donate, you scroll down to the Incentives tab, select the incentive of your choice, attribute your donation accordingly. You can split it up so you don't have to put all your eggs in one basket, but let's unlock even more GDQ. We have a $50 donation from Andy that says, so excited to be able to participate in the giving this GDQ. Thank you all for always running such a fun marathon and inspiring so many within the speedrunning community. Keep up the good work, everyone. Let's go, CrossCode. We've got a $15 donation from Skylon01 that says, Happy Lee Spin Tuesday, everybody. So happy to see my friend Yoshi at yet another GDQ and crossing those codes like a true gamer. Show everyone why this is the year of cross code.
And I know I already mentioned it, but we have a donor that just came in from Zealotus that says, it's a $50 donation, that says, awesome event as always, here to more games to watch, specifically Elder Scrolls. And again, that's a $20 limit that we need to reach. We currently sit at $467.50. Please make sure you donate to our incentives. We've also got a bonus game three, which is Halo 3. We're going to need to raise $77,777 for that. That currently sits at $5,185.77. So everybody, please, again, make sure when you go to donate, go ahead and scroll down to the incentives and select it so we can unlock even more GDQ. We've got a $50 donation from Anonymous. That says, 86, the slow chef, slow is off the menu. We've got so many chef donations, I have to, I have to acknowledge them. I can't let them go and be 86 themselves. And we're all speedrunners here, right? So we need to go fast. Thank you so much, Anonymous, for that donation. I want to take a second really quickly to just discuss why we're all here today. And that would be Médecins Sans Frontières, also known as Doctors Without Borders. They bring medical humanitarian assistance to people affected by conflict, natural disasters, epidemics, and healthcare exclusion. When disaster strikes, MSF staff are often among the first on the scene, sometimes arriving in a matter of minutes. 94% of the money raised by MSF USA in 2021 came from individual donors as they do not accept any government funding and are free from any governmental policy or military goals. This allows MSF to reach communities in need without restriction, often going where other organizations cannot. All right, everyone, let's get some 2D action RPG hype because we are ready for our next run. Now, you've seen her recently on AGDQ 2023 online and Frost Fatales 2023. Now, Epic Yoshi Master returns to spin her way to victory in cross code, any percent, no menu glitches. The floor is yours, Yoshi. Very special guest. All right, everybody, just a quick second. We'll get you right back over. We have a $10 donation from Phoenix Mellier that says, Happy Leah Spin Longs Day. Good luck on the run, Yoshi. It's so good to see such a cool human doing such a cool run. And again, I told you, I can't, let the, I can't let the chef donations just go to waste. We have a $100 donation from Chef Jawson that says, thank you, chefs, for all the great chefing. Everybody, we are ready to go, so we're going to toss it right back over to the amazing Yoshi. Let's go.